Welcome to this video and first of all, really, let me say thank you, you and especially you. So if you're one of these 100,000 subscribers we now have, you're just amazing. And if you're not, maybe you want to become amazing. But anyways, I thought this would be a good opportunity to do something which I was asked for quite a bit and which I guess makes sense. Answer some common questions I get by you. And if you got more questions, please post them below the video and I might do a further video where I answer more questions. So let's dive in and let's see what you want to know and what I got to say. So here's one question I get quite a lot and of course there are different variants of it, but the core question is how do you learn so many things so fast? And the answer is if you look closely, it's not that many things. It's mostly JavaScript, the JavaScript world, and a little bit of Laravel and PHP, because I used to start with PHP when I started uh, becoming a web developer. But my main area where I'm active is actually web development with JavaScript, with serverless services. I worked a lot with that, and I simply learned it because I use it in projects like our new web page, which is built with serverless technologies behind the scenes. And this is how, how I learned it. I use these things and I don't dive into every single server-side language. I don't know ASP.NET. I don't know Ruby on Rails. I never even use them. So these are the things I don't know, but the things I do know happen to be about JavaScript, which happens to run a lot of things you need nowadays. So I guess it's also a bit lucky, something like that. But yeah, that is basically it. And then how do I learn it if I do want to learn something new? Well, you have to practice, right? It's, it's a boring answer, but you have to dive into blog posts, articles, maybe the source code. When Angular 2 was in the alpha stage, I had a look at the source code because documentation was so bad. Documentation for better documented frameworks uh, is of course a good source though for Vue.js, for example. And also of course, video tutorials, though if you're amongst the first to learn something, Resources are pretty scarce a lot of the time, though I try to also make a lot of content on technologies that are relatively new so that this becomes easier. But that is how I learned that many things and how I learned them so fast, if you want to call it like this. In the end, the most important part is practice it. Build example projects, clone popular web pages, of course, in simplified versions, and that is how you learn new things. Besides, of course, gathering all these resources which you need, like courses and so on. How much day per time do you spend learning? Well, you could say like 100% because you learn all the time, but actively sitting down and learning something new, I don't have a fixed schedule on that. If I need to learn something new or want to learn it, I can easily spend an entire week on just that. Or I distribute it and spend a week and thereafter two hours every evening. But since you have to count in these example projects, we're of course easily talking about way more than one week. And I don't have a fixed schedule. So do whatever works for you and what you can fit in besides your regular job. I don't think it makes a lot of sense to sit down for four hours every evening if you're bored if you're not there because you're still in work in your mind. So it's better to then take a break and maybe just spend one hour learning something new. That is something you have to find out though. It's different for everyone. How do you stay up to date with the latest web development development? Uh, reading a lot. That is uh, the, the trick and Twitter. So following important people or, or basically every framework has its own Twitter channel. That is a key part because you read a lot of new things on Twitter for the first time. And besides that, of course, Stack Overflow, surfing around there, um, diving into GitHub and have, watching certain open source projects you heard about, have a look at the stars they have. That is how you stay active and how you stay informed. And that is something I, I can recommend. Though what I can also recommend is, and I, I do mean it like that, you can subscribe to our newsletter on academind.com. And not just because we want your email address to spam you, that, that's not at all the goal. But we'll try to share new things that we found interesting with you there. So that might be something that's interesting to you too. But besides that, the things I mentioned, um, forums, Twitter, great sources. 
can I use your code in my next project? I get this question quite a lot on my YouTube videos, for example, or the Udemy courses. And it's good that you ask, um, way better than just using it. But the answer is, yeah, you, you can use it. But there's one important thing I absolutely have to highlight. All the code is, of course, for these tutorials. It's never ever the code as you would write it for a project you sell and ship to a client. Why? Because a lot of testing and optimization and of course more complex features go into such projects. And I know everyone wants to see videos where we build a real project from start to end. The problem just is a lot of that process will actually just bore the majority of you because it's also a lot of testing going back and forth. So I focus on the difficult parts and try to show these, try to some, show some pain points and some interesting features. If you want to use that code for a project, do it, but test it, optimize it and adjust it to your needs. It's not meant to be shipped to a client. It's not optimized at all in most cases. What should a new web developer start with? Because we have <laughs> tons of languages and frameworks nowadays. And I can recommend my web development, world of web development video, which I created a month ago or something like that. Um, you might wanna look at that, a link can be found below the video. Now, what should you start with? Always the basics, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. It's boring, everyone tells you that, but it's what the web is based on in the end. And you got to know it. You, you have to know these basics. And thereafter, pick up a server-side language. Node.js might be simple because you already know JavaScript, but feel free to also dive into PHP or anything like that. And then stop and build projects. Practice these things. And thereafter, dive into other things like frameworks and so on. This is how I would recommend starting. An alternative approach is to still learn these basics, but then quickly switch to like frameworks like Angular and so on, which is definitely the more steeper learning curve, but it can make sense because you're able to build cooler projects more quickly. The downside is you might not fully understand everything you're writing, so you'll have to spend time to, well, catch up with that and fully understand what you're doing. But if you do that, this might be the more motivating way. Anyways, no way around the basics. You gotta learn these. When will the next video be released? Um, that's a YouTube specific question, of course. And well, the answer is we, Academind, release two videos e each week. The, uh, the goal is to release one on Monday and one on Thursday. We sometimes very, very rarely deviate from that and have one on Monday, one on Friday. But two videos per week is what we're aiming for and what we always managed to do. There are weeks where you will see more videos, like before Christmas, we had a lot of videos. Um, now with the website launch, we have quite a lot of videos, but the bare minimum we're aiming at are two videos on, on Monday and Thursday. Can you create some video about X, Y, Z? These are very important questions. I wanna get your suggestions for topics. I can't do, or we can't create videos on every topic you suggest, but your suggestions are super important to me. And if you followed the channel for quite some time, you will have seen that I did create a lot of videos for topics that were requested by you. Now, there are some topics I just can't do videos on because I don't know the things myself and I'm not one of the tutors or coaches that simply create a video on something they learned like half an hour ago. That's not what I do. So you will probably never see a ASP.NET video by me because I just don't use it. But in general, I, I welcome your suggestions. I want them. I can't promise anything, but I'll do my best to cover all the topics you suggest and release videos that are interesting to you guys. So please keep these suggestions coming. How do you record your videos? Um, there is one simple answer. We created a video about that and you can find a link to that also below this video. What are your plans for 2018? Well, from a channel perspective or a academic perspective, the plans are to continue with what we do, but do it better, I guess. 
We got exciting topics we want to cover this year, both on the channel and on Udemy. We're working hard on our new webpage, which you might have already seen. If not, check out academind.com. It's, it's actually really the easiest way of accessing all the content we created. We have all the YouTube content we have structured on that page. Additionally, we have articles and we want to put way more effort into this in this year. So this is a major plan. Keep that going, make it easier for you to access our content and give you extra resources like articles for videos and so on. And we also want to spend more time on our newsletter. Make it a real newsletter where you get interesting news, not just about new content, but also, of course, but also about, well, interesting developments in, in the industry, for example. That is a major focus, but of course, as I said at the beginning, it's also a major focus that we keep Udemy and YouTube coming and cover the topics you guys want to see. Last question, do you hate React? Because I made this video where I basically said that I don't like React JSX, so this JSX syntax that much, and that I prefer Vue.js. Well, the answer is no, I don't hate React. I use it. Why would I have created a course about it otherwise? The thing is, what I said in this video, I'm not a big fan of JSX. It is what it is. I, I'm not a big fan of it, but it doesn't make React a bad library. I like React. It is an awesome library. It is very popular for a reason. I like Vue.js and I also like Angular. Yeah, I do like them all. I built projects with all of them and each library or framework has its own strengths and weaknesses. React's weakness to me is JSX. I know there are a lot of people who love it. That's fine, but I don't hate React. So that was it. I hope you liked this video. I hope it was helpful to you. If you got more questions, please post them in the description or in the comment section of this video. And I hope to see you in future videos on this channel too. Bye.